video explains how to read and interpret the AgriProfits crop enterprise analysis using an example of the report. In particular, it explains what is covered by the report, why this is important, and how to interpret the report information. The video concludes with a summary of key takeaways and contacts for any further assistance. The AgriProfits Crop Economic Report is a summary of all receipts and expenses related to production of a specific crop, such as wheat, canola, or hay in a specific fiscal year. The analysis is performed at field and crop enterprise levels, such as commercial crops, forages, and pastures. The generated field and crop enterprise level information allows producers to examine how each field and crop contribute to the overall net return of the farm. This knowledge can help drive crop choice, selection of appropriate crop insurance policy, reporting to co-owners or landlords in a crop share arrangement, and other short and long-term business activities. Also, investors and banks need this information to assess the lending risks and capacity for payback. The individual field and enterprise crop economic reports use the same format which includes four major sections, revenue, costs, both variable and fixed, economic performance measures in terms of gross margin, net returns, physical crop yields, and investment, including the value of land, buildings, and machinery. Let's examine the revenue section first, using an example for field-level production of Roundup Ready canola in central Alberta. The sources of revenue are reported as dollars per field and dollars per acre. Yield is reported as bushels per acre. From the example of the report, we can see the crop sales are the major source of revenue and account for $438.70 per acre. The canola yield is 41 bushels per acre. The expected market price is $10.70 per bushel. Other sources of revenue, like receipts from crop insurance, miscellaneous income, and government programs account for less than 1% of the income and are not substantial for this operation. In this example, the straw was not baled and there wasn't any aftermath grazing on the field, so the corresponding revenue is zero. So how good is this? One way to answer the question is to compare the results with the corresponding AgriProfits crop benchmarks published every year. In our example, the AgriProfits benchmark for a canola crop in the black soil zone indicates the average crop sales at $419.87 per acre, with the top third of producers averaging $557.47 per acre. This producer's crop sales revenue is $438.70 per acre, 4% higher than the benchmark. Next, let's examine the cost section. It summarizes all costs for growing Roundup Ready canola on the field in a given fiscal year. It is subdivided into variable and fixed cost subsections. In our example, seed, fertilizer and chemical costs account for $152.49 per acre, or 44% of the total production costs. Understanding these costs will help make management decisions on inputs and practices such as crop and variety choice, soil testing, and use of fertilizer and chemicals. The fuel and repairs machinery account for 16% of the farm's costs, or $55.78 per acre. Labor costs are the sum of paid and contributed labor. The contributed labor is valued at an opportunity cost hourly wage as declared by the producer. In our example, the total labor cost is $11.70 per acre, or 3% of the total production costs. The depreciation cost for both buildings and equipment contributes substantially to the total production cost. In our example, it accounts for 16% of the farm's costs, or $54.74 per acre. Together, the agronomy, fuel, and machinery decisions account for 76% of this farm's costs, implying the majority of the farm manager's focus should be on those areas. The resulting total production cost of growing Roundup Ready canola accounts for $344.61 per acre and is a reflection of technologies used and management practices. 
comparing field level production costs with the corresponding benchmarks is the first step in examining the economic efficiency of those management practices. In our example, mostly due to the fact a producer does not hire labour, he has lower total labour costs, $11.70 per acre, compared with $30.27 per acre in the benchmarks. The agronomy costs are largely in line with the benchmarks, but the machinery operating expenses and depreciation costs are higher on the example farm as compared to those in the benchmarks by 36% and 11% respectively. We also note this producer uses his own land base and does not pay a rent. The total production cost is lower than that of the benchmarks by almost 5%. Although this is an indication of good cost standing, this producer might want to examine the machinery and equipment situation to determine the sources of the related higher costs. Let's look at the resulting crop economic efficiency measures and later on compare them with the AgriProfits benchmarks. This field provides a gross margin of $161.42 per acre return once all cash costs are paid. This amount is available to cover depreciation costs, principal payments, and owner's withdrawals. The net return of $94.98 is the profit remaining after payment of all costs and can be used for future investments and owner's withdrawals. Knowing the gross margin and net return information, the farm manager can use this to evaluate and negotiate a fair market rent with a landlord on renewal of an existing contract or on the rental of additional land. Comparing the producer performance with the AgriProfits crop benchmarks shows this producer is above the benchmarks by 20% and 39% for gross margin and net return respectively. The last section is investment. It provides a summary of investments such as land, buildings and machinery dedicated to each individual field or crop enterprise. The investments are reported as the total value and value per acre. Land value per acre reflects the regional land sale prices for the corresponding type of land. In our example, it's about $1,975 per acre. The building's investment, frequently represented by grain storage facilities, is $171.28 per acre. And the machinery investment is about $529 per acre. Comparing the crop investment measures with the corresponding benchmarks, a producer can examine the investment intensity and efficiency of crop production. To illustrate, let's compare the producer's investment results with the corresponding AgriProfits crop benchmarks. In our example, the producer's building's investment of $171.28 per acre is about 32% higher than the benchmarks. The producer's machinery investment is $529.22 per acre and is also higher than the benchmarks by about 15%. The comparison tells us that canola production in our example is more intensive in terms of employed land, building and machinery than the average conditions represented by the AgriProfits benchmarks. But are those investments justified? To answer that question, we need to examine how much net return is earned per dollar of investment for this particular farm and compare to the benchmarks. In our example, the producer's return on assets is 3.5%, 0.2 percentage points higher than the AgriProfits benchmarks. Let's briefly summarize our example. We saw that the field level results indicate good performance in terms of net return and return on assets. Both measures exceed the corresponding AgriProfits benchmarks by 39% and 0.2 percentage points respectively. This performance, however, is the reflection of the field-specific conditions, in particular crop yield. The performance can change significantly once the conditions change. Also, this producer has larger machinery expenses and depreciation costs compared with the benchmarks. The producer may consider investigating the reasons for these higher costs. This ends this module. For any questions or additional information, refer to the Government of Alberta Agriculture and Forestry landing page. AgriProfits links may be found under the Agriculture Business and Economics sections.
You can also contact AgriProfit staff directly at 780-422-4088.